What's up, everybody? We are live again. Dinah Samir, Search for Huru. And I have the brother, uh, Bomani Tahimba, on with us uh, once again. He's a, he's a regular to our, our show. And uh, we're going to be discussing, you know, Brother Tahimba has caused quite a stir online uh, yeah. these last couple of days. And Look. we're going to get into it. Um, you know, today's topic is why Negro peons need to travel to Europe and not Africa. Now, um, Brother Bomani, if you could remind people, what exactly uh, do you do? Um, you know, you, you do the group tours and, you know, go ahead, go ahead and go into detail and tell people what exactly, uh, what's your service? All right, perfect, Brother. Appreciate your energy. Just want to make sure we can see and look uh, good and everything. We are good to go. Yeah, you know, one of the things we do, our family, and the main things we do, we do Africa Repatriation and Investment Tour. So it's a specific tour service that we tell people about, and we also let people know that this is a real life tour. So I've traveled to nine different African countries, and the one that's the best for me, that I feel like is more to my roots and culture for my upbringings in Jamaica, and it's, you know, it's Ghana. Ghana to me is like the Jamaica of Africa. It has all the tropical feel and everything. So I've designed an incredible itinerary around Ghana. Sometimes we do four regions, sometimes we do five regions, but that's about like half of the country. And we go to some of the best places that's going to connect you with your roots, your culture, as far as Holocaust dungeons, historical information that you're not going to get anywhere else. Uh, the Journey of a Lifetime also deals with business and investment. Like the November 16th to the 26th, 2018 tour we have, it's incredible, brother. As, as far as talking about getting land, beach access, uh, land in the most tropical area, right by between like Winneba and Accra on the coastline. We're going to visit an incredible brother named Kojo Asasifo, one of my best brothers from the October 2016 Ghana tour. This brother told me that he's going to repatriate, build all kind of wonderful things, and he did. And he moved in May of 2017. So May 2018, this year, we linked up with him and went to his place for lunch. Our brother really just linked us with, you know, we ate at a restaurant. We were the first group there. So he has this whole property built. He got farming going on. And I want to show everyone who's going to repatriate or thinking about repatriation, make sure they have a plan. So we have practical links like that, that we connect people to as far as someone is going to tell you how he did it and you see how he did it. And it's not just something where someone is just making a video behind closed doors talking about Ghana. We take you to the live scene everywhere. I got so much videos. It's unbelievable. I'm like releasing five to 10 videos every day for the next three months of our entire tour. I mean, highlights, unbelievable. I had a crew of people, I pushed them to the limit for us to take videos and pictures consistently. So you get an access of where you see your documentation of your tour. You can share your experience with your family. You know, Bomani Technology is the operation part that we do tour books and everything. As a matter of fact, you know, I mean, these are things that we do. I mean, we're talking about a tour operation that have stand the test of time to where we started October 2006 with a business setup and did the first tour. December of 2006, and from then, we have elevated. This is one of the last books. And I'm going to take you back in time to the first book. Mm -hmm. This first book is of the second tour, and you can see this is a. You can see the evolution is different. This is a, a little booklet, you know, like uh, 16 pages, and this is a full book we have. This book is the heart and soul of the tour. This book provides you your itinerary. That way, you don't have to have a little flimsy paper carrying around it provides you all of your tour information as far as practical information telling you to be on time follow schedule follow the tour guidelines and the rule uh, it gives you details about how to just focus your mind on positive things and give you translation from tweet and most of all a lot of business and investment information and for the ladies that love to shop this is a shopping paradise tour for you uh, so it's a combination of everything there's nothing we're missing and ultimately what we do good also is we have an incredible nightlife where we take you to nice places as far as we can socially gather and socialize with the rest of your tour members. Uh, one, one of the things you provide for the safety of all of our tour members, uh, we did a test run on this, is a 24-7 licensed one or two Ghana police officer that will be with us on tour the entire time, wow. be on post the entire time. So my tour members are fully safe. One of the issues that I have in Ghana is with these fake ass wannabe roster punks that it go around my sisters and leech off them and trying to 
get them to just get them visas and get money. Uh, right. One of them scammed one of the sisters on the trip where she came back and all hippity hoppity and gave a visa last year. And this guy came here, say hello to her in Atlanta and then bounced and went to New York and connected what he was really wanted to do. So I'm telling sisters, just because I got these guys say that they love you and they want to be with you and they may cool, be cool because they smoke a little weed and they look like they, they, they try to look like they butch a bantan like they don't want to. A Jamaican <laughs> roster, but they have no consciousness. These are fake ass rosters. So I have a 24 hour security, uh, especially this fake ass roster did it called Ross Okra. He has this crew called Amos and Kuma. And you know, I thought it was really about pan Africanism nation building because you know a few people like Nkuma Dodd and things. So this brother been connecting with us. Uh, you know, so if, if you're gonna connect with my crew, one of the things I put you to work at, you gotta do bags. You know what I mean? I'm a one of the person, I'm, I'm I'm the owner of the company. And we have to move bags every time we move from location to location. It's kind of like a military operation. Like an, you in the Navy, you go from port to port. You know, you have to have your guys ready to, to get bags because when my tour members paid $2,950 for this tour or the last tour, uh, which is May, $3,700, I don't want them to worry about nothing, bags and things. Plus they pay for additional $50 tips, which we pay all of, which we used to also add to all of our crew pay and all tips to make sure that Logistics is smooth. When we get to the airport, hands on deck, all hands on deck. So any any guys that are around and not doing that, and I notice a trend from some of these guys, they'll play like they want to help, and but their main purpose is to really just suck what they can get from our sisters. So some of those things are things where I'm protecting our brothers and sisters that's looking to travel. And one of the biggest complaints I've had is with some of these fake hustle sellers that's being too aggressive to some of the sisters. And some of the people that are there, so in general, you know, me, me, I understand the hustle. You know, I've been working since I was 15, loading watermelon truck at the Brooklyn Terminal Market in Brooklyn uh, and, you know, uh, putting Christmas trees on white people, you know, cars and stuff and making some money and being out there and just doing business. You know, you know I've been, always been an entrepreneur since I was young and into technology. You know, so it's like I had to have the level of work ethics, but some of these guys don't have anyone to teach them work ethics. They remind me of some of these weak ass men that started in America that ain't about nothing. So we don't want to be aligned with people that ain't about nothing. So I have security to protect our sisters. And I also got, I got my brothers that are like Marines that, that's going to be in the back. And it's just like naval operation. You have the Marines. Marines are the, the badasses on the ship. I love those guys. Those guys hold things down. And they're, they're the ones that usually control things. If, if, if sailors or Marines are acting up, they throw them in the brig. And then they, they, you know, they got their, their gun rifle with a head butt you, gun butt you, and you know, if you out of order. So we're gonna protect our tour people with also our own brothers and sisters that's gonna be in the back. In case we have any crazy tour members, they are also tour members. We say, hey brothers, y'all need to cool down with this. And this is a respectable operation. Well, Mani Tamba is a modern day Marcus Garvey that's looking to build a network and a connection. Show him the high level of respect that he deserves. He's not doing anything more than being the greatest professional. You guys send email, text or anything. He's gonna communicate back with you. If you wanna meet with him, he'll meet with you. If you wanna do a video call, he'll do a video call. If you got a whole group of people and the, the money is, is right and you're going to want me to present, I'll fly up to you any state, country where you want to be. I'm about my business. You see my office? It's, it's, it's a, it's a modern-day high-tech office in a town home where we got computers and all kind of things that you'd never believe. But money technology is a serious business. And, you know, that's why I'm trying to add a, a, a distress signal out because in, in, in naval operations, you deal with strategy and tactics. So when these coons were buck dancing and playing themselves, and then when my crew was tripping and not doing the work they're doing, I played it cool. As a matter of fact, I gave my crew more and more rope to hang themselves. I partied, you know, we, we, I made sure to took care of more things for them, paid them more, made sure it was extra nice to them and everything. But, you know, I can't stand a group of men that's supposed to handle bags, move logistics and things, that, you know, and, and they're just tripping and not doing the work, talking about they're tired and stuff like that. I, I, and I recruited these two roster brothers that are twins that, that, um, that repatriated a few months ago. And, you know, they, they, they want to make more and more money and do things. So I tell them, yo, brothers, tourism business is incredible. And we do it the best. Africa for Africans been in Ghana 14 times. And I've delivered 225 to 30 brothers and sisters. And as a matter of fact, I've been at One Africa 14 times in a row. Anybody want to know anything about Bomani Tamba, contact the folks at One Africa, whether Brother Shabazz, Imacus. And I've been going there every year on oh, every man. tour. Uh, 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 the, the, queen, the queen mother spoke very highly of you when I was there. Well, appreciate it, brother. Um, we have been great business partners, and she know I deliver. I don't talk about things. I bring, as a matter of fact, lately I've been bringing two full bus sort of groups to where it have kept some business in place because 
the strength of the power black business brother is one Africa. Think about the fact that if we're not going there and going there to buy the food and going there to do the lodging, I'm because one Africa would have shut down a long time ago. And it's not just us. It's a lot of other brothers and sisters like us on the African diaspora that support the sister. Just like the Micklin Hotel is one of the best hotel chains in uh, Ghana. You have one in Accra and Kumasi, two to three star hotels step up where they have a nice compound. If one time I realized that when we didn't go there one time, there was nobody there. And I realized that the heartbeat of black owned business because I ended up going to an upscale black, half black, half white owned hotel operation called MJ Grand. And those clowns disrespect my people. We mm. paid big money to them in, in 2011 and 2016 to give our people the best upscale upgrade. And some of the members who were supposed to have two separate beds, they gave them mattress on the floor. So MJ Grand, I would recommend that people don't ever go there. It looks nice on the outside, but on the inside is whack. But when we go to Micklin, they make sure you have two separate beds because most people are coming on this tour because they don't know each other. So usually if I have two brothers, they're the same age and they may be in the same location in Atlanta and they more than likely have the same consciousness because if you see my shirt, they say Africa for the Africans. So you can already tell when you're gonna to go to this company that these are real people, you know what I'm saying? So people are, so that's usually my, uh, my flag to, to scare away the coons and the people or clowns that are gonna come and not really appreciate this work. That's why you see Africa covers the entire map. We're gonna, of the world, we're gonna dominate. It's Africa for the Africans family. We're taking over. So if you're not with, coming to Ghana and staying at One Africa where you're not gonna get your hot water and AC, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna get no TV in the room. You're not gonna get some of those things. If you can't handle that, then you can't come on this trip because we don't have much of an option. So for the people who want the hot water, we are gonna put you at another location or if the people want the single room, the another location, maybe about 10 minutes or 30 minutes away and give you that. But as far as the Micklin Hotel, that's the only hotel we're going to stay at. We're not going to upgrade you to no White Horn Hotel like the Gulo and Tulip, you know, which really frustrates me because I have these two, these two uh, folks. Uh, one is an Army retired and one is a very senior person in the Army. So you know they get big bucks. When I was in the Navy, once you hit that mark, you paid. But so they think that's because they have an extra seven, dollars $800 to get some 10-star hotel. They feel like they should have that option. So... I can't have that because if you come on my tour and you, we got to fly the bus all of, us, all of us somewhere where we got to give you all this special treatment. It right. kills the brand of Africa for the Africans where we want you to experience something in Ghana. Like for three days, I really want everybody to stay at One Africa where you're going to get a cool shower where you're not, it's not cold water. It's just natural water. Hey, real quick with money. I would like to cut you off, but the One Africa had the best pancakes I ever had in my life. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pineapples, kick ass breakfast. Breakfast off the chain. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so we provide all these things and, you know, we want to make sure people are comfortable. But one of the things I want people to experience is three days at One Africa where you don't have any hot water or AC. So, you know, and the biggest reason for that is the majority of people in the world, especially black people, do not have access to hot water where they could click on a button or click on a tap and turn it. And next thing you know, you know the water's coming through hot. Most of us don't have that. As a matter of fact, when I was in Jamaica, I didn't know nothing about hot water until I came here in America and when I was 11. You know, and you know, it's, it's reality of it. And the African continent, we want people to experience an experience where you can, you know, you can feel the experience. I mean, we already are spoiling people already. We got this beautiful tour bus, big TV, beautiful sound system. So, Marty, what I wanted to get in, sorry to cut you off, but I just really want to get into that too. Uh, in the red says, does he offer more than one Ghana trip per year? I would like to travel with his group later this year. Yes, he does. But this is what I was telling people on Facebook who were criticizing you. I <laughs> said, I said, no one offers a tour package like you at the price point that you offer. And the level of professionalism, too, brother. And the level of professionalism. Nobody does. I mean, I've been researching this stuff. Um, you know, people ask if I would want to do tours. I say, no, go with Bomani, because I'm just not in a position uh, right now to, to do group tours. You know, especially in what we're going to get into. You, you know, you have about 30 or 40 people on these tours at one time. How do you deal with the many personalities? Well, brother, perfect. One of the ways we fix these problems is, and I'm, I'm ex-military. Um, my job was an aircraft technician uh, in the U.S. Navy. And one of the things that uh, we learned was how to just follow the leader and follow the organized strategic game plan. So, example, when if you have to go out to war, and you have, you know, you're gonna have your, you're gonna have all the things organized. 
to where you know that you got to have your hands on deck with baggage. You know, you got to work out your deal with the airlines to make sure you book all the, the package as far as your flights. Find out the different personalities of people, where they're from. But most of the time, this right here, the red, black, and green aligns the type of people that we have. So you usually have more of the same mindset of people. So usually 90% of the people, it's so simple because they go with the flow of what we're dealing with. But the only bad thing about it now, that's why we have to put out a distress signal that no coons and no white devil lovers are allowed on the tour. And no white, no people who want white grade upgrades. You know, like one lady, she lives around all white people and uh, she bragged about it and things like that. So, you know, she's out of touch. So that's one of them people that come and cause trouble on the trip. And I don't want the trouble on the trip because there's nothing to complain about, brother. I've done this 14 times straight. And I'm a cause one Africa to tell you that Bomani gets better with time, like fine wine. We make it happen and we put our heart and soul in it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm only person that's here at this business operation. When we move to Ghana, we're gonna have a massive crew. So we're gonna dominate the market of tourism. So I tell, I dare people to, to do their research and find a better organized opportunity and someone who's going to treat you with the highest level of respect and professionalism. As a matter of fact, I just recruited one of my naval officers. He's going to be, be the second in command, Lieutenant, uh, and they're not going to call his name yet at this moment. But uh, he understands how we're going to we operate and everyone has to understand that. So I just hired a new bus company. I got a new guide. I got a new everybody, a, a white house and remove everyone on my crew and, my crew that used to work for me because the biggest problem I have when you do this tour operation, you have to operate in sequence and order. We had one disruption and, and, and mistakes were made on the behalf of my crew and other tour members and we can't, we have to run a tight ship. So we had, we were at Kumasi Mall and I'm telling my tour guide, brother, you made a big mistake by bringing us to the mall when I asked you to, to take us to ATMs yesterday. Now people are going to be all over the place, and our goal was to go directly to shopping at Banuir and Tanso and places like that. So while I while we're doing all of the, the ATM stops, uh, I'm trying to get everybody boarded. Once I realize I got everybody boarded, I'm back at the bus making sure everybody is good. My tour guide decided to take a you know an Olympian run to chase after somebody. I'm not sure who it is. And I got someone else on the bus trying to break past me. And I tell this lady that the bus is boarded. And we're about to take off in a few. Please have a seat so we can get ready to go. She was like, I'm going to go get me a smoothie and try to bulldoze past me. I said, lady, if you leave, we're going to leave you because we can't hold and wait for you. She was like, well, the tour guide is over there. He was going the same direction. I was like, the tour guide is, is not the leader of this operation. He's not the boss. He's just a tour guide. I've told my tour guide already that he shouldn't do that. But the lady disrespectfully in front of a bus of people bulldozed past me after I gave her and told her that we are leaving her. So once um, she did all of that, I got off the bus and I was like quabbing on my tour guide because I can't leave my tour guide. You need to stop this fooding system, get on the board. And once she got on board, we took off and left. Once the lady saw the bus leaving, she started calling the taxi driver to hail the bus down. Next thing you know, she, we see her running. So naturally we stop and we board on board. That right there caused a whole lot of problems. So basically at the beginning of the tour, I explained to everybody that we have a schedule and if you don't be on schedule and you do what you want to do, you will be left. And now once you're left, it's your responsibility to use a tour book, call a hotel or reach out to a taxi driver to take you where you need to be. It's not something where it's a distress where you're going to die or somebody going to kidnap you. So this lady freaking out thinking that something bad going to happen to her. Uh, yeah, but, but Marty, people need to understand that you, you, your name, your brand, your reputation is on the line and you're responsible for 30 or 40 people. So that's a, that's the reason why you have an itinerary and you should stick to the itinerary. So when it's time to go, it's time to go. You know, you have the eat, sleep and shit itinerary for a reason, because, again, you're the one that's going to be responsible. So if something happens to the lady, it falls back on you. And so that's what, you know, people need to understand, because this is a group tour, keyword group, keyword itinerary. It needs to be followed. Absolutely, brother. And uh, that's the only way we do it. Example, I'll give you an example. The airlines and the uh, Navy is where I spent my 10-year career as an aircraft technician. I've uh, been a fine aircraft technician, fixing a whole lot of fighter jets and a whole lot of big bone aircraft and small jets. Uh, I studied uh, logistics and I studied um, troubleshooting. And that's why I've been able to build a technology business, fixing computer and not being able to, not having to work for anybody since I was 27 uh, years old and now uh, 40 years old. But um it taught me the greatest lesson in my life about paying attention to detail and being strategically organized. Um, so every single operation, when you're in the Navy, 
I remember a lot of sailors getting left behind because some of them were in bed with fine women. And the captain of the ship said, that's not his business. You're told to be on board at certain times. So if you miss it, it's your business to, to, to figure out it, to get on board. When I was working for the airlines, every time we had to fix an aircraft and get the, the, get the aircraft boarded, uh, anybody that were on board when, it's the, when the captain of the, the aircraft, just like the captain of the ship, said, uh, it's time for the aircraft to be closed and we're pulling off. Once he said, give that word, everybody that works for him as under him is supposed to be on board and be in position to pull out. And they're not going to wait or stop or open the door and do for anybody else. So Bomani Tayemba, Africa for Africans, tours and investment. Africa tours is 100% the same as the airlines and the naval operation. And if you do that, you'll be left behind. And if you give me a problem, I'm going to shut you down because you're being disrespectful and rude. So this person conspired against me. Her roommate that doesn't even know her got on my mic and saying that she feel a type of way that we left her, that we were almost like her roommate. And this is me in front of a bus full of people. And then we had two people that were in the army, the uppity folks that, you know, that, that should never been on my tour in the first place because they wanted a high class service and people to kiss their ass. And we ain't about that. They conspired with those two and those became the four witches that are shut down on Facebook, my youth. Bumba clot. And now come on my trip and think them can take over. Uh, we run things. So, uh, but, but, but my issue is, uh, so you see, he grabbed the mic on the. No, I didn't grab the mic. My, my weak ass tour assistant, SAS, who is not with us anymore and got de demoted and shut down and blocked and not on our operation anymore, gave the mic to the lady that ran off the bus. And the lady that ran off the bus talked about, well, I was just uh, getting some smoothie and dead than me. And I didn't know anything was wrong with it. The lady, yo, I speak English and I speak fast sometimes, but you heard exactly what I said. And I told you over and over, my tour guide also got specific instructions to tell people they need to be in the bus on time. And when we run around searching for them, if we can't find them, we're not going to sit around and wait for them. So these things are clear. And then she made it, she made it seem like I was a terrible person. She was like, you know, where I'm from, men don't leave women. And, and you know, they don't do stuff like that. And, you know, now I feel like I'm in Africa and the men are not protecting me and everything. And she just created the side feminist show Make, and made me feel bad. And then another lady get on the mic, which is a roommate, which initiated it, talking about she feels some type of way. So both of them got on the mic, and my tour assistant that know better, you know, side with them because they are females and, and things like that. And, you know, and I was like, you know what, sister, you know the rules. Both of my sisters who travel me many times, you know the rules. You're supposed to explain to these ladies that this is this is not good behavior, and you can't do things like that. So I went to Antanso, and I'm trying to basically just... Um, see what's up with a sister. And I'm like, are you okay with it? And she's like, I need to talk to you later. I was like, no, you can talk to me right here. So I began to talk, talk with her and she started yelling and screaming at me. You, you, you don't need to be leaving a woman. You know, real men don't do this. I was like, sister, we have a policy just like the airlines and everything. And she kept on screaming and yelling my ears being disrespectful to me. So everything, everybody seen Facebook on those group pages in me retelling the story of what happened on the tour. And yes, people, some people, have, my tour members have called me and, and tell me, Bomani, you're gonna mess up your business. You know what I told them? My business is a respectable business. Any real respectable person who call me and do business with me, they'll know what I'm about business. Just because I'm telling people, I'm spilling the beans on everything that went on on the tour. I'm being honest with people because I want, I'm making examples of my staff members and examples of tour members. Do not come to my tour and interrupt our program. When you come there, make sure you know the itinerary, be clear on the itinerary. Because I had too many tour members. When I asked them what we're doing today, they didn't have a clue. Brother, this book right here and the tour information that's on the website, the link I send you, and all those videos tell you everything before you give me a dollar or anything. This is a digital copy on the website for this book with all the details. And folks don't have any excuse. I've asked several people what we're doing and none of them were able to tell me what we're doing. And it gets frustrating because every minute in the morning someone is coming up to me, what we doing, what we doing. And it's like we explain what we're doing the night before on the bus and, in the, and explain what's detail. So people just really need to do their work, do their research and coming out to us. I'm explaining to everyone, if you're not willing to do that and not willing to accept the Micklin, and accept our tour rules, then I beg you, please do not send your money to my office. I get tired of people sending money to my office um, via wire transfer, via PayPal, via checks, and I'm not even clear who they are. You know, so I'm telling people, those of us who follow me know who Bomani Tamba is and respect who he is, and if you can't do that, do not come on my tour. I'm not desperate for money. I'm a technical specialist. I can make a half a million dollars a year doing technology work and surveillance, all kind of stuff. I was trained in all kind of high tech stuff when I was in the Navy and all kind of things when I was in the, the um, work for the airlines. The only reason why I quit those operations because I tired of being the smart black guy, I get railroad and everybody push the workload off on you. 
and then you don't get the credit you deserve and things like that. So I built my two elite business, Africa for Africans and Bomani Technology, because number one, Delta Airlines refused to give me that, that Delta Technology job. They just wanted me to be the, the, the guy that do all the dirty work, the changing tires and brakes, using your hands to go in all kinds of tight spaces, and fixing electrical and electronic wires and doing all that work. And I wanted to get into the computer technology. So since they didn't do that for me, I started computers on my own. I built my uh, built my uh, opportunity, and later on, I got A plus, Network plus, and uh, Security plus certifications, and just continue my business. Um, so you're talking about somebody that's about his business, that's that studied and worked, and I built a unique, incredible administrative office here with my bare hands. Every single thing that's here, wires that's connecting network, I did it 100% by myself. So I tell people you're dealing with someone. That's about his business. I want to see repatriation work more than everything else. And that's why I take people around the country. But if folks are going to come with a snottish, bougie attitude, Negro peons, take your punk ass to Europe and do not come to Africa on my tour. Or maybe you probably don't need to come to Africa in general because Africa don't need your drama. We need people that's about building and not their coolest behavior. Now, so just like you think you live a privileged life, I don't want to hear what you're used to. It doesn't matter. I'm the captain of the ship. Me and my lieutenant is running things, and everybody needs to enjoy their tour. This is the best tour you and you're enjoying your life. I swear, I put my life on it. If you come on our tour and you don't tell me that this is the best tour you have had ever, I'm giving you a full refund back. We don't play with that. We execute religiously more than anything else. I I, I put any white-owned business operation against what we do in Ghana, and we execute and blow them out the water like we're in the military playing naval battleship. So what about the, um, well, since I paid $3,000 so I don't have to follow the rules excuse. How do you, how do you feel about that? That's some excuses that people are giving towards this, uh, for this behavior. Yeah, there's, there's no excuse because I, I'm a person that when I talk to you and I do conference, I do more conference calls than anybody else and I record every single last one of them and I edit them. I spend the time here at Bomani Technology to edit every single conference call and put a lot of prop. Uh, presentation and details together so people are clear. If you are a person that don't want to read information like most of the people that come in these stores, you're out of luck because I'm not going to have no mercy for you. The next person I come on my tour and act with that behavior, because like I told you, when people are disrespecting me, including my tour staff and people, I was just smiling and being cool with it and, and, and enjoying my time with my 80 year old son and telling them that, you know, what we're going to do with all these people, we're going to fire all of them because you, you, my sister, my brother, and my mother are going to run operations of this company and along with the, the elite group of my ex-military and ex-airline brothers and sisters that I, I've already used to replace every single person that used to work for me that I've ever seen in a video and done anything for me. We're coming through strong with the newest and most powerful operation ever. Africa for Africans is taking it on another level. So if you come on my tour and you pay that money, you disrespect me, I'm going to shut you down, not when I get back, like I'm doing this tactic. I'm going to shut you down in front of everybody and let people know that this fool that's coming on this trip, I already explained to them not to come and disrespect us. If you are going to come here and do this one more time again, we're going to put you off this, put you off the, our bus and put you at a, another hotel location to where somebody else is going to pick you up and, and tour with you on your own because you're not going to come on my tour and disrespect the other 99% of people that are perfect tour members, pay their money, follow the rules and everything. It's always one to two coons. I don't know how it ended up being four coons and some of my tour members being coons, the tour um, crew members being coons also. You know, I understand the situation that you, you see a woman and she, it's a sister and we left her because she's being disrupted. But how are you going to decide with her because we just left her? You know what I'm saying? Because she's a woman. Like one of my uh, my fake Nigerian uh, tour assistants, which I fired immediately uh, after we, after we uh, got on the plane, was saying she's a lady. I was like, brother, so we're supposed to sit there on the bus and run around for this lady, wait for this lady to get some smoothie that's going to take 20 minutes when she don't, when she know the rules. I'm not here to kiss anybody's ass. I'm not desperate for money. And if you're going to come on my tour, you follow the rules or you're going to get shut down immediately. And the next person that do things like that, we're going to take you to the nearest hotel and we're going to get another tour organizer to take you and deal with you and take you around and give you all the stuff you want. And you can spend all the time at the mall, but you just won't be on our ship. The same way it works at the airlines and the same way it works at the naval ship which has been what I've learned from us, 18 to 28. And, it's, and those are the most prestigious, highest operation of business in the entire world. No one run more organized logistics than the Navy and the airlines. And that's where I got 100% on my training. Plus I developed business administration 100% on my own because them stupid university classes that teach you how to do business don't show you none of the stuff that we have learned and developed. 
So, so, but my, now there was another incident at the hotel, correct? Like, like what the, the change hotel? No, what we have is um, now we have the Micklin Akron Kuma said the hotels are perfect. Uh, when we stay at One Africa, if you request you want hot water, I put you at the Almond Tree, which is a beautiful um, bed and breakfast hotel right there by One Africa, owned by a Jamaican couple. So we support the, you know the Jamaican couple and we support Imacus, uh, our Pan African sister from America. So they go there, they have hot water, all of the rooms. Then also these ladies requested AC. So naturally that takes you to one Africa and I put them down there. I told my tour guide, Mr. Kovner, please make sure you give them the best hospitality service because they're hostile. And no matter what we're doing, they're still tripping. You know what I mean? So he was instructed to do that. So he put them in the best space. So that's good. So anybody who want that, we give them that only when we're in Elmina. Other than that, the Micklin and Accra and Kumasi is the perfect two to three star hotel that we're gonna stay at and that is better than anything else out there and they give you the home feel. So there should be no issues oh, with the hotel. That doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, at one Africa they have the wall units, right? The AC, the wall units, don't they? No, there's no wall units at one Africa. Only well, I mean, but the thing is you're right by the water, it was so cool anyway. Brother, I stayed in those rooms 14 times. Yeah, I was, I was fine. My son a few times. And if me and my son can take a cool shower and, and, and lay in a place where there's no, as a matter of fact, they have the fan, and the fan works good to where sometimes we just turn the fan on. But my problem, my thing is, if we can enjoy this experience, so should you. It doesn't matter if you're a general in the United States military. It doesn't matter if you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. You should be able to experience the same experience as your brothers and sisters. If you can't find another trip, I ain't going to make no special privilege for no Uncle Tom bootlegging sell out coons who feel like we're going to kiss their ass. This ain't what my business is about. We're about nation building. We're about hard work and dedication. So I'm warning people right now, everybody, especially people watching this video, I'm not desperate for your money. So don't come on my trip. That's because you think you paid all kind of money and everything to act funny. I'm giving, as a matter of fact, next conference call I'm to, I, I do, I'm already explaining to everyone that if you already paid money already and you're going to come and trip like this, let me know so I can hit the refund button. And we got to trust me, we got money to refund you ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Right? ASAP, this is a properly well-organized business operation and we do logistic things right. And we're not going to have nobody disrespect us or interrupt our tour operation. This is a mission that cannot be compromised. Repatriation has been the weakest movement ever. And it wasn't until Bomani Tayama and Sister Imacus and a few other people and the Diaspora Coalition there in Ghana got together where we really push the energy to where our brothers and sisters have citizenship and our Ghana is at the forefront of repatriation movement. So we don't want no fools to come on these trips anymore. We want people that have business investment, investors that's gonna put their money where their mouth is and about certain things. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm so serious about this. November 16th to the 26th, it's Thanksgiving. School is closed. You know, more than likely your job gonna give you some time off. So folks, lock a deposit down for $400 ASAP. We only have 35 slots on our big tour bus. And then we get you going on this journey of a lifetime. And remember family, no coons allowed. Everybody can Everybody we please get the lights up. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> There's an echo. There's a bad echo. Africa for Africans forever family. Guys, there's 153 people watching, only 74 likes. Please hit that like button, uh, everybody. Please hit the like button. That's all I'm asking for. Uh, and make sure you uh, support uh, Brother Bomani. I know for a fact no one puts on a program uh, like he does, especially for the price point. I mean, for what he offers. Especially for black people, brother. I want you to understand, especially for black people, because a lot of times people complain we don't do anything for anybody we don't, or, or for each other because we just make big money and we go off our careers. I'm letting people know this is a brother that could be making a half a million dollars a year. Trust me, working at the government for doing intelligence work. And he chose to join the revolution and be with the revolution and represent the red, black, and green to the fullest. And I am doing this for the generational. My, my little boy is it's in his veins already. And this is a, something that we are doing for our people. And I want this movement to be the strongest movement because we have no home in America. Come on these repatriation tour and let's work together to build a future in Africa. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's about, family. And so this isn't just strictly about, uh, you know, going on vacation like some people tre treat it. This is serious. I mean, you're oh, talking. Everything coming on a vacation. Everything coming on vacation. Do not come on my tour. This is not a vacation. So if you can give people some more details on what exactly you do on your on your tour as well, because I think a lot of people were just expecting vacation, but at the same time, brother Bomani, I know you're very thorough. Uh, as far as itinerary, uh, conference calls, I mean, you're very thorough. So there should be no confusion 
on what's going to take place once uh, you show up to the airport to leave for Ghana. Oh, uh, no, not at all, brother, because you know what I do? I document every single trip and I show you everything we do from A to Z in photos and videos. Everything is documented. You'll see 100 percent with the exception of a certain light light because, you know, we you know I believe in a the theory of we work hard. So I push my crew to work hard in the daytime and then we play hard at night. And then while we're playing hard, we don't got no time to record and everything. But we try to shoot as much videos and pictures in nighttime. Just like I was at um, uh, Vienna City in Kumasi and they was doing the uh, karaoke. So I had two of my brothers get up there and they were singing uh, Crazy Ballers by Bob Marley. So I was like, no, man, let me do the Bomani time, a remix, remix. I was like, so I grabbed the mic and we say, we're going to chase those crazy white devils out of town. And the, and the crowd go wild and like, boom, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going off and it was it had a great time. That's the type of person I am. And all the white devils are looking at me like, I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? And you know, and that's what I'm about. I'm not about any 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 integration on the punk stuff. I mean, we wasn't gonna go over there and beat them up or anything, but white people are too comfortable in Africa. So I just set it off on them, brother. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of the things you're dealing with. You're dealing with a black power general, black power captain that's not trying to hear no crazy stuff. You join us and you're part of our tour, you better be clear on what you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Because people, this is the realest program, you know, that we have put together over a period of time. We just get better. And I dare people to come and tell me that they find something better because if somebody would have to wake up six o'clock earlier than six o'clock every day for the next 20 years and they still would not catch up to us because that's what we've been doing, brother. Every day I'm dedicated to this office. After I finish my appointments and meet up or technical work, I'm always here and always have my devices accessible. I got one phone, my US phone. This is a locked phone. So family, if you're coming to Ghana with us, buy an unlocked phone and bring it. I had too many people that we explained that. Buy an unlocked Samsung Galaxy or iPhone, bring it with you, and then we can put in a mobile SIM card with you in Ghana to where you'll be able to have mobile Wi-Fi in your hotspot, and also you'll be able to have access to your phone calls and your network. That's the best way to communicate and have internet there in Ghana. But you know what, what, what I do, actually, I just get a uh, dual SIM phone with two SIM cards. Especially, that's perfect, especially you don't want to be with two, like two men with two phones. So that's a perfect idea. And as a matter of fact, Dynas, that was one of the first things I did. It was a Nokia phone, but I end up just using this right now. But I'm going to look into that and get me another one like a, with, a, with a dual SIM and see how that works. But the issue with the SIM here is my phone here is a locked phone. It's a Boost Mobile for a business phone in a nice flat rate. Uh, so that's why I have two phones. But brother, that was a great advice. So family, if you have that, you can get a, with two SIM card also. So these are the things that you need to operate. And then we'll go to the MTN store and get you all activated. All you need is your passport. So those are some of the services we provide. I can't think of one thing that we don't provide and organize for people. And also we have a list of all the things you need to prepare with, get ready and be organized. So we don't miss a beat at all, brother. And then the greatest thing that we have is we have all pre-recorded conference calls that you go back and listen to and you hear the same information. Uh, did he check, uh, just like that uh, introduction I sent you, that five minute introduction, did you hear that I told people we're going to leave people if they don't follow on time? And, and you know, the, you know you, and then people, you know, I said it in the beginning, I said it over and over. Mm. So, so somebody in the chat room says, I mean, I'm just going to read the question. Then I'm going to read the post that kind of got people right. upset. Uh, where's this? Uh, okay, where did it go? Basically, he was saying, why would he pay? But the, but the L Web 100, you're having a, a great experience. He's guaranteeing a great experience. So I'm confused on your question. But his question is, I'm confused. But why would I spend my hard earned money to not have the best experience? But you're he's guaranteeing you have the best experience. So. Hold on, brother. Hold on. Hold on. This is the best experience. We have two to three star beautiful hotels that we're going to go to. We have a beautiful tour bus. We're going to drive you around to all of the Pan African sites. Yes, matter of fact, let me just go to the exact schedule that's coming up in uh, in, in November. Go you're going to stay in Accra and you're going to get the Pan-African experience. We're going to go to Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park where you can learn about the history of Kwame Nkrumah and his legacy. You're going to go to the art center where you can shop, 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 have a good time. You're going to enjoy drumming and nice energy. You can go to W.E.B. Du Bois Center, George Padmore Library. We're going to have an incredible business investment conference after dinner later on that evening. We're going to go to Shazer Freak uh, restaurant uh, and nightclub uh, owned by our brother from the African diaspora here in Atlanta. We're going to have a great time. We're going to meet beautiful uh, sisters. The brothers are uh, going to just love the energy. The sisters going to meet beautiful, incredible brothers. It's so much fun. Then the next day, uh, you know, in Accra, because we, we have two Accra days when we do a three-day in Accra. 
is we go up to the mountains, to the wood carving village. We go up to the Trinity Foundation. We pass Bob Marley Wife House, our foundation. We have a great time at the Botanical Garden. We also, later on in the evening, we go out dressed up in our finest wear to, to eat dinner at the, um, the, the, the this incredible restaurant, Caribbean um, restaurant or Jamaican Ghanaian restaurant there in East Ogon. Uh, called Jam Rock, and it's incredible. The food is nice, the music is nice, the drink is nice. You're enjoying the vibes. So, you know, two days you're right there. You're already enjoying the time. And then the first thing you get there, the activity that we have, because you get in the night, is nightlife. So I'll take you out to one of the street parties where you're eating fish and listening to good music and you're enjoying yourself. So I have no idea what somebody's talking about. I have a good time. When you get to the hotel, the bed is comfy. You have your hot water, your AC. You, have, you, have, you know what I'm saying? You have your barbershops by you. You have everything that you need right there in that compound in Micklin and in that area. And brother, the same thing in Kumasi, we go out shopping to the culture center. We go to the Deshanti Palace, the military museum. We go, um, you know, go to Intanso. You get your Adinko cloth stamp. You go to Banwira by a Kente cloth. That is so fun. And you're on an air-conditioned tour bus with a microphone and the best professional people at the front, making sure you're safe. We have a licensed police officer with an AK-47 and a side piece. And we have military guys in the back that's here to protect you. And my brother, this is awesome. And then when you go to One Africa, it's like paradise on the you're on the ocean front. If you like to meditate, you can meditate out there oh, by the water and enjoy yourself. Family, it is like fabulous. You know, brother, this is my 14th journey of a lifetime, and I've been all over the world and everywhere, and this is the best trip I've ever had in my lifetime. Yes, I fired my entire tour staff because I want to up it and make it even better. And yes, I yes, I shut down a few tour members because they're disrespectful and rude. But beyond that, man, yo, this is the wickedest journey, man. I love it so much, man, that we, we, we had to cancel Ethiopia because Ethiopia wasn't bringing in no energy. And we just dissolved that and created the next Ghana tour. Because, brother, I have about 100 people. That's why I tell people I'm not desperate for money. Or if you're a coon and you're a clown and you want to trip about, I'm not, I'm paying all this money to come. I was like, yo, keep your money, brother. We don't need your money. I only want the right people on this tour. And how did the 100 people I got right now? I'm like, damn. Um, I actually thought about, you know, we, we're going to have to get another bus. So um, I'm probably going to have two crews of bus going there and things. So, you know, it's, you know, people have to understand that, you know, not being cocky or arrogant or anything. It's the fact that I, I work hard and I built this business, a black owned enterprise where I've hired a lot of black people and I've hired my brothers and sisters who, have, who may have never had a chance to go to Africa to come as an assistant where maybe I'll say, I'll give you 50% off or you just pay for your ticket. You come, you hold the camera, you do certain things and put them in training mode. And a lot of them have appreciated it's just this time around, I had some real clowns. I had these two brothers I gave great opportunities to, to and they were crying every moment and bitching and moaning. One of the things that you come, in, come on tour as my roadie or somebody that's going to roll with me, you, you, you got to get up every day. Everything I do, you got to do. If I get up every day and I do the tour schedule, I don't have no time off. Every single day where the bus goes out, I have to be on board as the captain of the ship and make sure I go there. Tour members can stay back at the hotel and relax and enjoy themselves whenever they want, whichever day they want to take off. But if you're my assistant and my crew, you don't have no time off. So these guys are roadies. They, they're complaining, oh, we worked hard uh, a few weeks ago. My back is hurting. My, I don't feel good. So these guys are twins. So they just, they just did some creepy stuff like where one of them would show up on the bus and the other one disappeared. I was like, where's your brother? Then they didn't do that. So people are like, why are, you, why are you talking about them? I'm talking about them because I want to make examples of them. You don't come on my tour and we make deals for you, pay nice hotels, and hook you up and also create opportunities for you and things like that. And you come on my tour and disrespect me. So the two of them and the Nigerian crook that was my tour assistant, you know what I mean, is gone. You know what I'm saying? Too many of my women complaining that he's, you know, he's not giving them the change back, not giving them the SIM card or money. And I'm yes, I'm calling names and calling shots, shots, more shots, more shots inspired than anything. This is a naval operation, and it's like me blowing the enemy out the water with my aircraft, my missiles, my battleships, and everything. This is warfare, and I gotta have the best people to protect the people who's gonna write that check for three thousand seven hundred for the May tour or 2,950 for the November tour. You know what I'm saying? And the reason price is so different because the November tour is a nine-day tour. The tour in, in May is a 14-day tour, and it ha offer a whole lot more luxury as far as Takarati and investments there and things like that. But these are two incredible tours, so I advise everybody, before you come on the tour or call or ask a bunch of crazy questions, please click on the button on our website, africaforthafricans.org, and look at the November tour and look at the May tour for next year. And once you, once you click on it, you have all your details, a full itinerary from top to bottom with every links of every hotel we're staying at and exactly what we're doing and all the details scheduled in the T as far as time and everything. There, 
The same thing with you know all of the tours that we have. So once you do that, you you read to the information, read to the tour overview, read to what's covered, what's not covered, and be clear. That way, when you when you talk with me, you can write down intelligent questions and not a bunch of crazy questions. That one of the things I have a problem with people is people ask too much stupid question. And you know what a stupid question? A stupid question is a question where I was going to ask. You know, research, let, me, let me finish up. Let me finish up, brother. A stupid question is where people need to do the research, where you give them information. It's like if I give you a paragraph of details. I expect you to look at it real quick and then ask me an intelligent question from that. But I don't expect you not to look at it and start asking me dumb questions. What's the price? What are we doing? Where are we going? Have you ever done this tour before? Are you going to take my money? Are you a scam artist? Are you a crook? Are you somebody that just started this business yesterday? If you don't respect me enough to look at the details and comment and insult me, I'm going to hang the phone up on you. I'm not taking no disrespect from nobody anymore. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask that. How, um, as far as the uh, stupid questions, because obviously a lot of us black people, unfortunately, we've been programmed to view Africa in a certain matter. And no matter what information's presented to, you know, debunk that, a lot of us still use 1980s stereotypes to justify not going to Africa in 2018. How do you, how do you deal with these questions? And I'm sure you get that you wouldn't get if you were traveling to France. Or yeah, like, um, and the hell with friends. I, I dare anybody out there, if you can show me a better itinerary in France and England, you, I have to transfer $5,000 in your bank account right now. I'm not saying we rich, got money like that, but we have done well in business for with our investment and technology operation. So I'm basically putting my money where my mouth is whenever we have anyone and tell them that when you come on all of our future tours, like the four ladies, they didn't qualify. If they came to me and said they had a bad time, they, they wouldn't qualify for the refund because you know what? They didn't follow any of the rules or any of the instructions and they were disrespectful, which caused more problems than anything else. But anybody ever come on any of my trip and they do what they're told to do and follow everything and they're respectful and they tell me that this is not the best trip of their lifetime or they didn't have a good time, I will give you an instant refund of a full amount, 100%. Just like if you can find a better Ghana itinerary or tour operation or company than what we do and more efficient, I will transfer that money into your account. And Dinah Samir, you hear me saying that on your show right now. Oh, this is, this is money documented. Mouth is. And hold me to that, brother. Okay, this is, I mean, this is documented. This will be up. up and also, Dinah, I'm also saying to you too, because you have a, you have a great, you're a great researcher. So find me a better company than me, brother. And I want to offer you $5,000. So I can't, you can do I whatever can't. you want to do and travel somewhere else. <laughs> I can't, I can't find a better, at on, your brother. price point. I you got to do some more research, brother. I'm going to give you a, a, a week to do some more research. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, and then we I'll, do I'll, a follow-up tour, a follow-up um, interview, and you just let me know if you found it. If not, we're going to go online and I'll show you the transfer of how much transfer the money in your account and we record all of it. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So everybody, thank you for joining us. Make sure you hit that like button. We have 152 people watching, only 110 likes. Please uh, get the likes up. So I put your link uh, in the chat room. We have Tina Thomas and Inneret who are interested in going with you uh, in Perfect. November. Can you can you kind of share with them the process as far as getting in contact with you? What's the next steps if they... Uh, yeah, let me do that. Uh, family, uh, my phone number is 404-931-9429. Please send me a text message of your email address and your phone number. And uh, also um, any details of what you're looking for specific, if you need any sp special things. And what I'll do is uh, I'll add you to the system and I'll call you and I'll make sure I send you all of the pre-details. But at the same time, family, 100% of all the tour details is on our website at Africa for the Africans.org. Once you get to the tour, um, once you get to the website, you go down to the link and you click on it. Can you repeat the number again? And let me put it in the chat and say repeat it. Yes, uh, the number is, and I'll get you a card also. Give me a second. Uh, yeah, yes, he is in Atlanta. Shout out to Nikki Love. Nikki Love is in the chat room. She said, what's up, Omani? Hey, Nikki Love, you one of the first sisters that I did a show with back in the days about my Ghana tour. And see my sister, we're still doing the same thing. So I appreciate your love. So family, my number um, is 404. 931-9429. And uh, you can email us also at AFTA2010 at MSN.com. And uh, send me all your details and I'll lock you into my phone and I'll call every single person. And you can ask me a whole lot of questions which we can talk for over an hour or however long you want. And I just want you to be clear. I don't want anybody to give me any money up front. I just want us to be clear and go through the details and make sure you're clear because last, last on the last tour, I was really heartbroken. I felt that those four ladies really disrespected me and treated me bad. After I was on the phone with them all the time, I answered a lot of text messages and a lot of details for them. And I was very respectful and I took care of them to the highest level. I actually gave those ladies the best accommodations and room out of everybody and they still disrespected me. So 
family, you know, I just want everybody just to be clear. I'm going to take care of you and you're going to have the greatest time, I promise. Just, you know, understand that, you know, Bomani Tamba is a person too and he deserves to be respected and doing things like that to him really hurts him and break his heart. Because last, I remember one time I was, I was like, you know what, I feel so bad because people are treating me bad and I'm doing all this thing for them. And also families, one or two people out of an entire tour group. So it's not a lot of people, but at the same time too, you know, no one should treat us bad for the work we do. So what I have, you know, set up is this, you know, they just really have to just understand everything. So family, just reach out to us and I'm available all day today to go through things. And it's only 35 slots. So uh, $400 deposit is due as soon as possible. It can be paid through PayPal, wire transfer to Chase, um, you know, but we can have that conversation. And I have a tour link, detailed email that I'll send to you, payment options, the visa details and the preparation. But at the same time, the family, all those things are on our website. All right, buddy. A couple more questions. Um, sure, absolutely, brother. I'm here. Another, another question. Um, somebody was asking, do you go to other places outside of Ghana in Africa? It, yes, perfectly. Uh, November 2019, which is going to be our epic South Africa tour. Right after that, literally, literally look at our dates and everything in our tour book. Because one thing about this tour book, it has all of the future tour details and schedule. So let me look at the dates of our South Africa tour. All right, perfect family. Yeah, so yeah South Africa, it, it also includes um, uh, Zambia, uh, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. Now, South Africa is like eight days, and Zambia is four days, and also you have access to Zimbabwe, Botswana, where we're going to do a river safari. So those are the four countries that we're going to go to in the November tour next year. Last year, we went to Ghana, Togo, Benin in November. Um, and also, um, we had an Ethiopia tour, and Tanzania tour is canceled. The thing for this family is we can do much tours as possible. At the Ethiopia tour, I put my heart and soul in it since I went to Ethiopia last year. And the thing I feel is that tour didn't work because people didn't commit and make the deposit. The reason why the Ghana tour works is because our people are willing to commit to the Ghana tour. And they like the fact that it deals with roots, culture, business, investment, nightlife, shopping, and networking, and everything under the sun. Uh, so unfortunately, not every African country can give you what Ghana give you. And that's why Ghana is our number one country. But if you want to go to other countries, family, put your money where you mouth it and put the deposit when the information comes out. All right, another question, Obamani. Are um, the I'm not African, I'm an indigenous native Hebrew Israelite Mo from Turtle Island, can they come on the trip? No, you know, brother, I'm being honest with you. I have too much people that that, that want to come. I don't have enough slots for everybody. I got like every, every the last four trips, we had, had to we've had to leave people by and cut people so we can't get you on board. We get you on another tour. So the fact that I don't want to have people who don't belong on our tour, I only want the best people. So if you're going to come and cause some kind of drama and think you're going to debate me on a bus about this and that, I will shut you down and kick you off my bus and give you a refund back and send you back where you, wherever you want to go. I'm literally being honest with you. I will literally get one of our guys to go to the bank and get the exact amount of money in cash that they paid for, give it to them in their hands, get their luggage off the bus and put them in a, in a, in a nice high class Benz taxi and send them away with a security person to be safe because we don't need this drama. We yeah, you know, one of the things Dennis I put on, our, on on Facebook when I was lighting up these coons and, and, and my lazy ass crew. Which I'm gonna read the um, post by the way. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, I, I basically um, you know, <laughs> I told him that you know we don't got time for this. We got to make this work. We cannot compromise our mission for repatriation. We have had that buck dancing fool um, W E B the Bois. Even though he made a re redeem himself a little bit, but it's, it's, he went to Ghana when he was old and decrepit. He wouldn't even went to Ghana when it, his best years. In his best years, he spent disrespecting Marcus Garvey and killing our movement, our repatriation. You know what I'm saying? I give him a little respect and I go to his place because at the end, you know, it's something we can tell people that if coons like him didn't do what he did to Marcus Garvey and was more pan-African like he was, we'd have the wickedest movement ever. And so I'm telling people, we ain't compromising for nobody in this movement. We keeping it red, black, and green. And if you come on the tour and act like a fool or a clown, as a matter of fact, you already, they already know already because everybody who's come on this tour got to watch this video for required watching. Or else you can't come on the tour because we're going through everything on this and everything on that introduction I sent you and everything on the conference call. So I'm just being clear with people. You people want to come and debate me, you fake ass people talk about you're not this Africa, you're not that. This tour is for real black African people who want to know about their roots and culture. The rest of you people, if you're going to come and debate me about something else, stay off my tour. It's, you're a fool or you're stupid just to come on my tour to think you can change the ways we run things. We have everything set and go. It's Africa for the African. See, this is our map right here. Beating our chest and we're running things. You know what I'm saying? So you fools get shut down. Okay. 
All right, so so let me let me go ahead and read the, the post that kind of started this. Uh, family, we had a great tour, the best ever. We had this one coon who want us to hold up a bus so she can go shopping. So we left and she chased the bus down and got pissed at us. We shut her down. I block this coon and she keep keeps trying to link with us. Once the tour ended, I blocked and disconnect from any with any coons and move forward with the best. We can't compromise our mission for bougie Negroes who want to stay in expensive white devil's resorts, not us. This is a 100% black operation. We keep it strong. Milk, Micklin Hotels in Accra and Kumasi are better than any white man hotel in Africa for real black people. These tours are not for high class coons. We can't compromise our mission for bougie Negroes who want to stay in expensive white devil resorts, not us. This is a 100% black operation. We keep it strong. Milk in hotels, milk, Mick Lynn hotels in Accra and Kumasi are better than any white man hotel in Africa for real black people. These tours are not for high class coons. Now, a lot of people are questioning your professionalism. Oh, what your response to that. My professional is basically I'm tired of weak ass, stupid black people coming on my tour and trying to and trying to sabotage. The one of the greatest missions for repatriation ever. So I am most the most professional person you ever meet in your life. I put my life on it. You know what I'm saying? My business office ain't no joke. Anybody that's ever been in business with me, you get receipts, you get everything typed up, organized to you. So if you feel like I'm not professional because I'm I'm putting out a distress signal, let everybody know that I don't want no coon, no punk ass people who feel like they need to kiss their ass. That is what I'm saying, and I'm doing that right now. Any of my tour members that travel me that feel like that I'm, 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 I'm going off or anything. As a matter of fact, one lady that was real nice to me and was cool as hell and we, we, we enjoy each other company and had fun, fun in Ghana and she did certain things for us and everything as far as this enjoyment. We told her basically, you know what I mean, sister, I don't need you texting me a bunch of messages and lecturing me, telling me to cool down and telling me that I'm gonna ruin my business. I'm telling her that that's exactly what I wanna do. I'm trying to ruin my business. I'm trying to ruin my business because when you ruin your business, high class coons and, and punk ass clowns don't come at your business. Wouldn't, you know what you get, brother? I get real RBG brothers at myself that's coming to do the work, coming to help out, coming to make a difference, coming to enjoy themselves and enjoy this beautiful black owned establishment and network with other black people and, and build relationships that they will never build before. They meet people that they will never meet. So my professionalism and distress signal is to boom, 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 boom. Kill all the bumble clock coons and I make them understand they can't come from a blood clot trip no more. I'm gonna fuck around. I'm gonna wanna pull you up on my trip. I want a real RBG. And any pussy will take me no professional, then don't come from my trip and I beg for your money. You know what I'm saying? Let's shot that in a patois. You know what I mean? If a Jamaican accent still strong, but Ghana is a Jamaican of Africa. We don't want no pussy all there. Somebody brought up. Somebody. 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 <laughs> One of the responses to your post, how uh, black people suffer from post-traumatic slave disorder, slave disorder, and that by you acting this way, it's going to, uh, I guess, cause black people to choose Europe over going to Africa because of post-traumatic slave disorder and by you acting like this. What, what would you, the, the, in fact, okay, you would, by you acting in this type of matter, um you are i guess i I'm guess destroying my business i'm destroying my business like i just said i'm destroying my business yeah destroying your business destroying by you acting like this and that you are going to detour people black people from going to africa because of pro post-traumatic slave disorder and that they're going to go to europe instead uh what would be your response to statements like this well perfect um what i'm going to tell them is that the ideal thing of it is we need people with an open mind. I'm going to explain that to you to come to Africa. Don't come with no damn rose-colored glasses. That's explained to you. What we have is a program that, that takes you from being a black person in America or the Caribbean, and we go through it. All you have to do is get on the conference call, talk with me, and go through the things that we have, and we will prepare you, organize, and get you prepared to go to Ghana. Not, you know, if you, you're not going to have the same preparation to go to, you know, to go to Europe or any of those places. And the thing of it is everything that you go to in Europe is irrelevant. Every place I go to Ghana is, is relevant to us. If I go to a restaurant, it's a brother and sister from Ghana that owns it that we're taking care of their family by going there. It's one of our brothers that repatriate that want to show us that they're building a restaurant that they're building a business. Jerry had the Memorial Wall of Fame for our African ancestors in Prom Prom. We took the crew over there, we had lunch, we had a good time and everything. So my thing to people is like, it's, it's, it's what it is. 
we set the best program up for you. But my point to you is that you can't just come and be disrespectful and talk about no post-traumatic slavery and all that, all that stuff. I understand black people are fucked up, but you are more fucked up if you're gonna disrespect a black person that's building something for you and taking care of you. I don't, I don't. This is no excuse. So that fool who wrote that comment and the rest of the people who, who, who are gonna write this comment, I want to play that. I do not care. I don't want your business. I only want business from a few black people. I don't want business from every black people. Black people who understand our me method. So if you want to go to Europe, take your punk ass to Europe. And if anybody think this is make them want to go to Europe, take your punk ass to Europe. You better be careful because when you go to Europe, then white people will kill you. As a matter of fact, we had a distress situation in, in England and I ran the hell out because I got I, I, I almost got lynched. You know what I'm saying? And all I was doing is just enjoying a holiday time there and hanging out with my family. You know what I'm saying? I have never had that problem in Africa. And plus, we have licensed policemen with AK-47 loaded to make sure anybody mess with our tour members, they give them a warning, a ticket first, then they get handcuffed second, and then get the paddy wagon taken away from them. So my tour members are protected 24-7 by hotel security and staff and crew. And you have my hardest guys that are street guys in Kumasi, Accra, and Elmina with you. The toughest guys in those cities are with us. So all the street guys protect you. As long as you follow my rules and, and opportunity and operation, do that. Because we had one sister, unfortunately, and a few people that stepped out and did their own thing one day because they got up late and they missed the bus. They didn't get mad at me um, because we couldn't wait two hours for when they got up. They got up about 12 o'clock. I'm like, yo, dude, we got to leave at 9 o'clock, the latest. So, you know, we basically, um, you know, make sure everybody's good. So you stay with the tour bus, you stay with our crew, and you're protected. But you go other places, ain't nobody got your back like this. You know what I'm saying? If you say, if you say you want some land and want some investment, I'll make sure you get the right person. And mm -hmm. that person cannot mess your money up or that person have problems with me and my crew. So they ain't gonna mess you up. Anybody ever come through me and get any land or any business, they know that my crew got them and they will never mess their money up. And anybody mess their money up, they call me and I make a few phone calls and they got their money back and that person be dealt with. It's that serious. I've built this enterprise from, from 2006 to 2018 to build it for real black people who want to live in Africa, do business and make things work. And everybody else, I do not need your business. Do not call me or waste my time. Keep away. Appreciate the super chat, um, Run Mark BC. He says, Brother Bamani, keep pushing. You are doing great work. The people or the people who are speaking negative did not attend on going to Africa anyways. And I believe that. Now go to go to France and get fucked over by these assholes that might kill your ass like they did to the in Greece. But, 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 but money, let's let's talk about that. So you've had the situation again. A lot of black people will still use 1980 stereotypes and not go to Africa. But the situation in Greece, and you know the boys that killed Bakari Henderson, that was his name, Bakari Henderson. You know the people that killed him. They're on. They got off on bail, like five hundred dollars. I think it was like five hundred dollars. Bail was five hundred dollars, and they returned back to Serbia. So he's not going to get any justice. You have another brother in China. Uh, I forgot his name. Who's behind? He was in a Chinese prison over some bullshit. And then, but mind you, you have black women, so-called educated black women, who when they go to these Asian countries and Asians start random Asians on the street start touching their hair, they make up every excuse for why it's okay. Why, why, why are we so? And but we won't boycott going to China. We won't boycott going to Greece. But again, we'll use every excuse to not go to Africa. Why? Why is that? Yeah, because people are conditioning their mind that if you go to Europe, you're gonna get five star hotels. You're gonna have people with massage sauna. You're gonna go to see the Eiffel Tower. You're gonna see the Big Ben and things like that. And they see these things in their child book stories, and they see it on cartoons, and they like, oh my God, Europe is so fast, and they build everything. But like I tell people. That those items were whack and garbage, and you waste your money. And the situation happened to that 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 that, that, that salad guy that got killed in uh, Greece. I mean, I'm not trying to say that he deserved it or anything, but my point is, we have in our crew. I got Marines that people don't know are Marines that ain't playing around, and I got guys. I got I already told you already. I got I got fully loaded, licensed police officers that say Ghana police, and they got the guns ready on safety, and people who are not even watching us. They don't even know who's watching us because I have so many people that are spies watching spies. And you know why I do that, brother? Because this business has done well for me and my family and, and put us on another level. And I will do anything to protect my investment. Anyone coming to tour me, your life is secured 
You are protected 100%. The only time you jeopardize your life is when you decide that you want to run off the bus and do what you want to do and not follow our rules. Then I can't really protect you. When you're with us, where we need to be at, you're being protected by everybody. We go out for nightlife, brother. Sometimes it's 30 of us. You know what I'm saying? We go to a club or anywhere. You know what I'm saying? People don't even know. Sometimes people think it's two or three of us. So once an incident happened, you see our crew come around and people, and then we're like, you know what I'm saying? So right. you go to Ghana with me at any nightclub. You have, you have. By this time, the the security guy is, you know, he's doing intel now. So what he is, he's, he's, he's a plain clothes. He's, he's not walking around Ghana police anymore. And what he is, he doesn't have that big AK-47. He just have a few side piece, and he have you know bulletproof vest. And then we have the Marines, which you know, which I always got to have one or two Marines with me. The Marines that's that's ready to. If any tour member disrespect us, they just say, "Yo, don't disrespect Brother Bomani, man. That's not cool. We can't have that." And they they also there to protect our sisters from those punk ass Rasta guys that's trying to exploit them. Now my Marines have been told that when you see these Rasta guys and we give them a warning, especially if we get, we'll give them the first one, then we call the police. And after, if some of them disrespect themselves, my guys were told to, to hold them down and get them a good proper ass whooping because no one is going to disrespect my black woman. Nobody, I protect my black woman to the highest. Even when I had those four coons, I still make sure that they were protected. I told my, my tour guy, which I had to get rid of, to take care of them. If you got to go, spend a few hundred dollars to buy breakfast for them or if you even have to put them in another five-star hotel do it because i want them to go home happy because once they go home me i run my military status tactics and strategy on them which is block 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 fire 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 hit them from every angle so i was facebook and murdering them i was murdering them on on on, on the um the group page that we have and whatsapp to the point where people started leaving because some people were pissed off at me and things like that so that's what Uber money time is, man. I'm just stirring up a little controversy. It's all good. I'm, I'm calling names and I'm kicking ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I, and, 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 and I and think, uh, I'm not saying all aggregated systems like that. I'm just saying, the, um, it, you know, if it's a few, like I'm on some of these black travel pages, right. and, you know, they, they brag about being educated, they travel, but then they go to Asia, they, they allowed weird, Asian people to touch their hair randomly on the street, and they and they, and they think it's okay. Like they instead of it's like they want to be the tourist attraction instead of going to the tourist attraction. You know, it's like they enjoy the attention and it's sick. But you know, oh yeah, well. brother, it's one of those things that, and that's why when the guy was saying about we're gonna turn people off, the thing of it is, my program give you clarity. The only thing I'm saying, brother, and I'm saying it is simple. Is that we just want people to follow the tour rules. Like I text you a subject earlier, you, you text you another subject, which which makes sense. Uh, Negro Europeans just interested in going, to, you know, going to, you know, going to Europe, and they should not go to Africa. But uh, what I really want to let people know that you have to follow every tour and travel policy. Bomani Time, a tour group, which is an elite tour group, that's like Disney World or any other tour group. Um, the airline policy, so you have to make sure you get on board on time. And you also have to make sure that you're there to do everything on time because it's not our responsibility if you want to be you want to do some unorganized stuff like i i, I had like a few tour members that consistently especially this one brother he's always late to the point where a lot of times i tell my guys just roll the bus a little bit and bump, bump, blow the horn because he thinks i'm really not gonna leave him unfortunately he didn't get left but a few times if it wasn't for his friend you know, which is a good friend of mine, getting off the bus and, and then letting him know he'd have been left, especially at the airport the first day when everybody's going to the bus. This guy just decided to do some side stuff and go off. You know, you can't do that. When he come with us, we said, everybody follow us. We're going to go to the bus. We're going to get the bus packed. You know, we don't let nobody carry a cart, you know, and just follow the direction. It's a simple situation. You know, don't come flashy with jewelry and all kind of stuff like you, you're a big baller. Come with an open mind and enjoy yourself. You like I said, whether you're a general in the military, whether you a, a PhD doctor, doctor, and you you all kind of things, it doesn't matter. You're a tour member to enjoy the best journey of your life. Only thing we ask is to respect our tour policy and our general terms. So there's a general terms on the the tour link itself that we require people to read, but people don't read the stuff and people don't listen to calls and things. So if we don't have enough people doing that, then it makes us our jobs difficult. So that's why I'm making examples of people right now. And I'm saying what I'm saying because I don't want to have to deal with this. Now, I feel like I almost had a heart attack having the baby sit every day. My tour member, that lazy ass Nigerian, he's sitting there looking like a model. I tell him, I was like, yo, right, just <laughs> stop looking like a model. You're here to work. You're not a pretty boy. I was like, take off your shirt and just put on something rough to wear and let's go get these bags. Help the people, help our tour driver and the, the tour mate load the bus. So he goes there, next thing you know, the tour mate is on the bus. He's standing there looking all pretty. And then the two Rasta brothers, 
they just sitting there looking like they just clueless. No, no, what happened? I was like, all right, check this out. You two pat the bus below, and you two pat the bus up front. And by the way, I had to pull them from breakfast. You know, I didn't even eat breakfast then. I mean, so it's like if you want to eat breakfast, you eat breakfast real quick, or you do the world quick, and then we eat breakfast. But it's like the breakfast is party for our tour members. Our tour members, that's where the food is for. That's what the dinner's for and everything. Once the little food is left over, it's for me and my staff members, and then you know our crew members. If not, all of us have, are being paid money to buy our own breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So sometimes I get confused when I see tour mem when I see tour staff members going and eating before other people, and and then the next thing I know, a tour member didn't eat. I was like, brother, did you pay three thousand seven hundred dollars come on this tour? So why would you eat the food that that person paid for, and you got paid a separate money to buy your own food? You guys are being disrespectful. You can't be doing that. So after a while of doing that for years and years of people, I just decided to fire everybody because you're taking advantage of me. Why should I babysit you? You know the bus needs to be packed. You know bus need, bags need to be put in the back. So my, my, my fake ass tourist is at Righteous, this is what he said to me. He was like, well, we, we can't just start putting stuff in the back. And I was like, you know what, brother? Please, please, just let me, give me a second. Just follow my rules. I'm the captain of the ship. I've been doing this for a long time and I know how to pack a bus. Do not, do not be on some lazy stuff. Like a lot of times over the years, like people have told me that, you know, he grabbed one bag and act like he's working and then disappear. Like a lot of times I have my second in command, usually where I have where, where, where they, they the ones that help me do all the logistic work. It's kind of like on a naval ship where you have a captain, myself, and you have an executive officer. Those, their goal is to make sure that all work is passed down from them to all their crew members and everything. And if they got to babysit someone and someone is not doing their mission, it jeopardizes the life of a complete naval operation. I remember there were situations where people got beat up or people got thrown off or people fell off a ship and doing certain things where or got left behind because they weren't following the rules and weren't doing their jobs and put themselves in jeopardy. So that's why we don't want certain people on this tour because it's important that we follow safety and protocol. We want to be the most elite company in the world as far as tourism. And I feel like no other company out there in the world can match us and can deliver what we deliver. But the thing of it is, I'm still a small scale company uh, and, and looking to beef up our 10 employees to about 30 or 40 employees. And once we start doing a whole lot of work, when I build my um, a corporate building in Senior, Senior Barracu there, which is about an hour and a half away from uh, Accra, and uh, about you know about an hour away from, uh, or 30 minutes away from uh, Winneba. So when I do that, we're gonna have an elite operation and Bomani Technology is gonna wire the place all kind of technology to where we have all kind of offices to where we do tours over the entire continent. But most of our tours right now is just Pan-African tours. Eventually I ha I'll have tours for Coons and people who, who feel like they need that. And I'll give them the 10 star hotel. And instead of paying 2,950, it's twice that amount of money. You, you pay double. So you can either get the, the Pan-African rate or you can get the Coon rate, which is twice as much as the Pan-African rate. So if you got that kind of money to waste, give it to me and I won't be on that tour, but I'll have my most Uncle Tom, bougie, sellout, Ghanaian brothers who want to do tourism and kiss folks ass, do that job and we all split the money. I'm fine with that. But right now, it's just only for RBG, real black people, man, family. All right, well, with that being said, brother. With that being said, brother, is anything else you want? Uh, what, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close out. So anything else you want to share in closing? Uh, go yeah, right. family, please go to our website, Africa for the Africans.org, and click on the tour links and look on all the details and then view all the information for the tour. And also check out our incredible YouTube page, uh, you can look for my name, Bomani Taramba, or youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007, and you'll see 100% of all the highlight videos that we have done in Ghana for the last several years. And more important, if you subscribe right now to our YouTube channel, I got tons of video of the last trip in May that you'll see because I want family to see the experience and the fun people are having. That way they can make a decision and come on the tour. And also, family, make sure you do your research and compare what we do with other people and respectfully write down good questions and let's go through it and we get you registered 35 slot deposit is 400 dollars and it's due by july 1st uh, we are going to fill up fast so family take care and reach out to me and i'll link you and i'll link you back <laughs> all right everybody i hope you guys enjoyed the show brother bomani thank you so much for coming on uh, really really appreciate it guys make sure you go to his site if you're interested in a tour send him a message uh, with that being said, guys, please go to search for Uhuru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, go to Africa Personified on those same platforms. Go to Africa Personified.Africa. Go to search for Uhuru.com, Dynasmere.com, and Amazon.com. Search your name, Dynasmere. Please buy a book. Until next time, family. Peace. <laughs>